hey what's up i'm ashley thank you for watching this video and i want to know why y'all so mad at sophie we're gonna quickly go through each episode to find out why y'all so mad at sophie and not danny because danny played her part in this too and i'm not condoning sophie's cheating but y'all gotta remember danny is not innocent in all of this and some of y'all be going in hard on my girl finley and i'ma just say it she's the most innocent in all this come at me in the comments we can talk about it and we gonna start with season one episode one nothing major happens between danny and sophie in this episode only that sophie told danny that the new neighbor would propose to micah before she went to her and when i first heard this my first thought was well if this is true what's the hold up did something happen and that was never clear in this episode I think it was slightly touched on in episode four and we'll get to that soon. So after that, the only thing was Sophie leaving Danny a voicemail message telling her that she misses her and loves her and what does she want to eat for dinner. And she was saying, I love you a lot of times. And I was like, is that overkill? Like, why are you saying that so much? And then that's when Danny took out the wedding ring, looked at it and like, she was thinking, oh, maybe I'll go home and propose tonight. And that's what she did. She went home, was waiting for Sophie to come home. And she proposed to Sophie and Finley and Micah was there. Everything seemed all good until we got to episode two. And then that's when we started seeing a little trouble in paradise. In episode two, Danny took that new job with Bet, And Sophie was annoyed with Danny for not talking it over with her first. Sophie was saying, I thought we were slowing down and settling into our lives. I spoke to you first before I took the job with Alice. Maybe we shouldn't even have our engagement party this week. It may be too much. And there you go right there. No communication. And let me know so we can talk this out. Are you siding with Danny here or Sophie? Because if I'm taking on a new job that's going to be hectic like a campaign I would for sure tell my partner about it. Maybe Danny didn't think it was that important to tell Sophie. Maybe it didn't cross her mind. But if you're going to get engaged to someone and marry them, shouldn't you know them well enough to know like, hey, maybe I should tell her I took a new job, you know, just throw it out there or something, you know, and then so that's problem number one. No communication. She only said things like, well, I thought you would be happy for me we should still have our engagement party and when sophie was like i thought we were selling in our lives together danny agreed and no apology she never apologized in that conversation so in a way you know danny took no accountability for that and i see a lot of people saying that sophie never takes accountability and it goes both ways with them Y'all just gotta pay attention. And it kind of always seems like Danny never really hears what Sophie is trying to say. Then we see Sophie telling Finley about Danny's new job and how her not telling her rubbed her the wrong way. She proposed and then messed up. So we see right there that that's kind of like a deal breaker for her. Not really like a deal breaker, but that's like a turn off. Then Sophie says what's scary is that She's never seen what a good marriage looks like and that her dad left the same day that her sister was born. So that could be a reason why Sophie cheated. She doesn't know how to stick around when the going gets tough because she never seen it. She goes right on to the next thing. She doesn't know how to communicate either. And because we see her not answering the phone when Danny calls her. She mad at her. She real mad. And we see Sophie telling her family, you know, She's scared that she's going to keep making decisions without her. And they're basically telling her, don't worry about it. And then we see Sophie's grandmother giving Sophie her great grandmother's ring while they were at the engagement party. And during that party, Sophie and Danny made up. So in episode three, Danny's dad schedules a walkthrough at this fancy place where they can possibly get married at. And here is where things get a little shaky between them again. At least this time, Danny did tell her dad that she has to talk this over with Sophie first. And I'm guessing she learned this from episode two. While they was doing the walkthrough, they found out that Rodolfo, Danny's dad, already booked it. 
without letting Sophie or Danny know. And Danny had to let him know, you know, this isn't acceptable. Like, no, you can't be doing this. Then later on, Sophie was telling her, you know, if it wasn't for me giving you the death stare, you would have let him book it. Danny was like, I don't want to hurt my dad's feelings. And Sophie's like, so you'd rather hurt mine instead. And this is where we go back to Danny not listening or hearing what Sophie is trying to say. Sophie was like, did you see the way these people was looking at me and my family when we walked up in there? She's like, I don't want to be uncomfortable at my wedding. I want to laugh and yell and eat food that my family brought because the people told them they couldn't bring no outside food. And Danny is just wanting to do what her dad wants because she low-key kind of wants it too. Talking about she don't want to hurt his feelings. But y'all got to compromise here. Like, who wants to be all stiff at their wedding and be looking side-eyed at their wedding? Girl, no. Then I looked at Sophie's side-eye a little bit when she was telling Micah, it's okay to hook up with a stranger. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm okay that's fine and then she goes on to say it's okay to be hurt it's okay to fuck somebody and all that's okay but i'm looking at that deeper now because sophie cheated because she was hurt and then she did fuck somebody but just because she was hurt by danny doesn't mean that that was okay to cheat with finley and Finley's not a stranger. But then this all reminds me about what happened in episode four. Sophie was asking Danny, you know, why don't you talk to me? She was like, I think about you all the time, but you're always at work. You always need space. You always go on your runs. It's like, I can't find you. What makes you so afraid to talk to me? And then that's when Danny's like, well... When I first met you, you had a girlfriend. And that scares me that you were so willing to leave her. A part of me wonders, will you leave me too? Sophie's like, well, she wasn't you. And then she gives her her great grandmother's ring. And she's like, I'll never leave you. I'm always with you because you're my person. Now, tell me what y'all think about that so first i mean i wish the show would get more detail about these things so we can really know but was danny messing around with sophie when sophie was in a whole relationship and was sophie entertaining danny while she was in a whole relationship and danny knew about it like what's really going on here and i'm not surprised if danny knew about it because we just saw in season two episode four danny not really caring if Sophie is involved with Finley in some kind of way even though they're not really involved she was supposed to go to dinner with her like Danny didn't even care she was like stay the night so I'm wondering if this is a pattern with the Danny like she doesn't care if people are in a relationship or not and I'm wondering if this is a pattern with Sophie where she's just up quick ready and leaving real quick when things don't go right or her way but what we do see in this episode we're still on season one episode four is danny telling bet the energy that i spent on you instead of my fiance is unforgivable so she knows she out here just giving bet all her attention and not her fiance she knows she messing up and she knows that it could be an unforgivable thing but does that mean that Sophie should have cheated on her no it doesn't mean that but she should have been giving her a little bit more time a little bit more attention actually hearing her out because she wasn't at times really listening to her she would always be like I need space I'm gonna go on my run I don't want to talk about it just leaving Sophie out there hanging while Finley is the one there for her listening to her and letting her vent while Danny is in Beth's face. Finley is there being a friend to Sophie. Nothing more. And Finley was venting to Sophie about that priest she was involved with. So they were there for each other. But like, you know, Sophie was telling Finley, Danny's doing her weird distance thing again. So in episode five, Danny's dad made a prenup and Sophie was about to sign it. She was like, I just want to marry you and have nine kids until her sister read it out loud to them. It was like, I don't think you want to do that. It basically said that if Sophie carries the kids, gives birth 
to the kids that they will get no money. They can't claim any other money, but if Danny carries the kids, then they can be a part of the trust. And Danny set boundaries with her dad. She put her foot down. She was like, this is not acceptable. Thank God she did that. And Sophie was telling her sister, like, she knows that that was hard for Danny to do. She could see it on her face. She processes everything alone. How do I get her to open up to me? I'm about to be her wife. You can't shut down your girlfriend, your fiance, your boyfriend, your whoever. When things get hard, you got to talk it out. You just can't run away. And Danny has a habit of running away and shutting down and not wanting to talk about it when she don't want to talk about something. Sometimes when you don't want to talk about something, you still have to talk about it. Especially when you're in a relationship with someone, you got to talk it out. You about to get married. You say you want to get married. So just like, what you doing? So low key, high key, Danny was pushing Sophie away. And the only person who was like really hearing her out and was there for her was Finley. So of course, you're going to go to the person who you feel like you can talk to. And it was all innocent at first. It was just a friendship. And then someone started getting lonely or some the chemistry started popping off. And you know, one thing led to another. <laughs> Cause during all of this, Finley was having problems with the priest. She was having problems at home. We learned, you know, she wasn't even invited to her sister's wedding. And I forgot about that whole Tess hookup. Finley and Tess hooked up when I watched it back. I was like, oh my God. I forgot all about this. But Finley was going through it. And also Finley was always feeling down and sad and feeling like nobody loved her or wanted her. And I'm like, girl, I do. <laughs> if Sophie keeps messing up, I'll hop through the TV. I'm kidding, kinda. <laughs> so in episode six, Sophie's telling Finley that Danny got up and left at 4 a.m. and she hasn't heard from her since. And she's like, at least you talk to me. And you see there, you see that? Danny isn't talking to Sophie. She's not communicating. And Finley's like, I love talking to you. You're the best. And there's that validation that Danny doesn't give Sophie, just slowly pushing her away. And Finley's talking to Sophie. She's like, Am I too damaged? When am I going to get my shit together? Am I too broken? And then Sophie's there for her. They're always there for each other. So they're like, you know what? Forget all this. We're going to have a bro night. So they go out. They have their bro night. They have drinks. And then Sophie's asking Finley, how come she never tells me I'm pretty anymore? And she's like, am I pretty? And Finley's like, very pretty. And then there goes that validation again. Daddy not even telling Sophie she pretty. She too worried about bad looking up in best face, working on that campaign all day. So anyway... Finley mentions to Sophie that she has to go talk to Tess. And Sophie's like, I wish Danny would talk to me. And then Finley's like, you know, Shane kicked me out because Kiara is moving in. So now she's moved in with Sophie and they're living together now. So they're still at their bro night. Tegan and Sarah's closer comes on. They start dancing. They have this little hip grab right there. I see it. Then they're on Finley's bike and... Sophie's like, everybody loves you. And Finley's like, no, they don't. There she go again with that, no, they don't. Sophie's like, I love you. You're the best part of my day. And Finley's like, I love you too, man. I really loved that moment between them. But then Sophie gets home and she asked Danny, how was your day? And Danny was like, long and hard. I don't want to talk about it. And I was like, of course you don't. And then Sophie was like, of course you don't. Danny said, don't do that. You're drunk and being passive aggressive. And I put my hand on my head. And Sophie was like, I just want to talk to you. Danny said, you're pissing me off. I told you I was tired. I don't have anything to say. I said, ooh, girl. So how can y'all really be mad? How can anybody really be mad at Sophie wanting to talk to someone who actually talks back? Finley talks back. Danny don't say nothing back, but leave me alone. I'm tired. I'm going to go on a run. I need some space. That's all Danny be saying. And y'all know good and well that y'all would be tired of that too. Now, that doesn't mean go out and cheat. 
Sophie never should have cheated. She should have talked it out. Well, she can't talk it out. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, so, okay. So there you go. Y'all saying, oh, okay, you know, Sophie never should have cheated, which is true. But she should have talked it out. But who is she going to talk to the wall? Daddy wouldn't talk to her ever. Daddy would be like, I'm tired. I don't want to talk. I don't have nothing to say. So how could Sophie possibly talk it out with Daddy? See, I just realized that too. But still, I guess, you know, that means, that don't mean go out and cheat. <laughs> Bottom line is, how are you going to talk to somebody who won't talk to you? I'll wait. So in episode seven, Sophie is taking a shower. Danny walks in, but she's on the phone busy with work. She don't even really notice her, you know, but then Finley walks in and she's like, oh, you've been doing Pilates. How you get that body? So, you know, she's giving her attention that she wants from Danny that Danny won't give her. And this is the episode where Sophie's grandma falls. And guess who's there for her? Finley. Guess who's not? Danny. Danny went to work. Finley was there for her, listening to her, comforting her. She was even like, do you want to pray with me? And we found out earlier in the season that Finley's not really into that whole church thing, but she was like, hey, I'm going to be here for Sophie in any kind of way she need me to be. And she went home, packed up her some stuff for Sophie to bring her back to the hospital, brought her some snacks. You bring me some snacks and that's a panty dropper right there. And we saw that's one for Sophie too. When she was getting Sophie's things together to bring her to the hospital, Danny walked in and Finley was like, are you going to the hospital? Danny wasn't even about to go to the hospital. She was about to go to bed. And the only reason why Danny went is because Finley brought it up. And when they got to the hospital, Danny wasn't even there three whole minutes. It was probably a minute and 48 seconds. And she got a phone call and she left. But the thing is, you know, Finley did tell Danny, I think that you should have been there for her today. And Danny was like, well, she asked me not to be there. She didn't really ask her not to be there. She said, oh, no. She basically was like, I know you're busy. You know, just go to work. She gave her permission to go to work. And Danny went. But wouldn't you want to be there for Sophie if you were Danny? So after Finley says that, Danny goes on to say, well, I'm tapped out. I'm giving her all I got and I'm like really though are you really giving her all you got because you're not even there you won't even talk to her is you not talking giving all you got you're giving all you got to bet and you even admitted to that you was like I'm giving all my energy to bet and it's unforgivable so how are you giving your all then she tries to insult her talking about your life is nothing like mine we have different circumstances and Finley's like, yeah, she's not my fiance. And I'm like, yeah, you better get her. Let her know, period. And then, you know, Finley's is so sweet. She realized that she forgot pillows. She's like, I can go back. Sophie's like, no, it's okay, you know. And then they have this moment in the hallway. And Sophie's like, I love you. And she like grabs her and they hug and then they kiss. And then Finley's like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And y'all coming at Finley, like Finley over here breaking up things. No, Sophie was initiating it. But only because Finley has showed up and showed out for her while Danny has seemed like she forgot all about Sophie and that she's engaged and they're about to get married soon. So then we see Sophie telling her sister that she kissed Finley. She was like, she brought me snacks. She was with me all day and I didn't want her to leave. But that she feels like shit and that she cannot tell Danny. So she knows she messed up. But at the same time, she's sounding confused. She was like, she was with me all day. I didn't want her to leave. She was there for me and Danny wasn't. It seems like Finley was, you know, just being a good friend to her. It was like nothing more but then... You spend so much time with someone, you start to bond and vibe, and then, you know, I don't know. Feelings came for Sophie first. Like, she was feeling something first. Finley was, you know, just there for her. So, for all y'all talking about Finley has broken up a happy home, the home wasn't happy. First off, they had issues from jump. 
Then we have episode eight, and that's where Danny's dad is telling her that he doesn't think that she should marry Sophie. He was telling her that she comes from a broken home and that she doesn't know stability. And when you come from a broken family, that's the only way you know how to live. I'm afraid that she's going to leave you when times get hard. And that's kind of what she did. I mean, when Danny wasn't giving her attention, she went to Finley. But Finley and Sophie were building this kind of bonding relationship because Danny wasn't there. And this was the episode where Sophie and Finley slept together. And they slept together after Bet lost the campaign and Danny was like, let's go get married in Hawaii. So Sophie told Finley that they were going to go get married in Hawaii tomorrow. And she was like, tell me how you really feel about that. And Finley's like, I don't feel, I don't know how I feel. And Sophie's like, do you feel calm? And Finley was like, you're just supposed to push your feelings down. Like shove them all the way down. You're the worst Catholic ever. Because they had this joke that Catholics don't express their feelings. So Sophie wanted Finley to tell her how she really felt. Like, don't get married. I want to be with you. I love you. That's what Sophie wanted to hear. Because deep down, Sophie knew that she didn't want to marry Danny. But she went on ahead and did it. Because, well, was about to go through with it. Because deep down Sophie didn't want to marry Danny she wanted to be with Finley even though she did love Danny she felt like something was off like it didn't feel right things felt more right with Finley because you know after Ben lost the campaign Danny was like let's go get married in Hawaii and Sophie's like so you have time for me now Danny was like let's go what's stopping us what's stopping us from getting married and Sophie's like I can think of a few things after they slept together, Finley started blaming herself. She went over to the priest's house that she was messing around with and was telling her that she knows that she hurt her. She thinks she hurt Sophie. She doesn't like herself. She's a horrible person. She always puts herself down. And basically, she was like, I'm going back home to Missouri. So, so Finley was at a low point and she told Sophie that she was going back home to Missouri and Sophie didn't want her to go. Sophie was like, are you leaving because of me? And Finley said, no, because of my sister's wedding. And Sophie asked her if she was coming back and she said, yeah. When Finley started walking away, Sophie was going after her, but then Sophie got called to go on stage. So if Sophie never would have gotten called to go on stage, this could have been a whole different outcome. Maybe her and Danny never even would have gone through with the process of the wedding or something. I don't know, because she was for sure going after Finley. Then they left us with this cliffhanger and we have to wait like two years almost to find out who she met with. And we found out that it was Danny, unfortunately. And I think that she went with Danny because she was comfortable. She was used to it. She knew what to expect with Danny and she was with Danny first so she's like I'm just stick with that and I'm thinking she's confused about Finley because Finley could be right for her and she's not used to like a connection like that so that's why in season two episode one we see Sophie freaking out when she finds out that Finley is coming back to town because she had already pushed all those feelings down that she had for Finley and she knowing that and by knowing that Finley is coming back to town she knows that those feelings are going to come back up again she had already planned in her head that she's about to marry Danny she was going back and forth on whether or not she was going to tell Danny or not she made up her mind to tell Danny but she never did it's, the girl should have <laughs> the girl definitely should have told Danny so when Alice told Sophie that Finley is coming back and that she told Finley that they both miss her Sophie was like, no, tell her to stay in Kansas. She has to stay in Kansas. She can't come back. And you know me and Danny are supposed to get married. And me and Finley hooked up. It was a one-time thing. It was a one-time thing, even though it was amazing. But she can't come back. And she admitted that it was amazing. And it did look amazing. And I think it's funny that Danny confessed to Sophie that she had a sex dream about Beck. And she wanted to tell her that before they got married. And Sophie was like, is that all? Just a dream? And Danny's like, yeah, it was just like a stupid crush, you know, like nothing more. And I just want to tell you that. And that was the perfect time for Sophie to tell Danny, I think, but she didn't because she was scared. Yeah, she should have told her, but nerves kicked in. And she knew that if she told Danny that she cheated, it was going to be a deal breaker. And she didn't want to cut off something that she was comfortable with. So when Stanley came through and interrupted that wedding, 
Sophie couldn't suppress her feelings for Finley anymore. And now everybody mad at Finley when Finley thought that that's what Sophie wanted because Alice told her that Sophie misses her. And in season one, Sophie even told Finley that she wanted her to come back. So in season two, episode two, everybody is mad at Finley. Sophie is telling Finley that she wants her to feel bad when clearly Finley is feeling bad. Finley was telling Tess and Shane that she went back home, cleared her head, stopped drinking. She didn't know that she was interrupting the real wedding. She thought the wedding was at night. She thought that she was doing what Sophie wanted her to do. So Finley is feeling bad and wondering if anyone will ever forgive her. She's taking on all the blame. She's only blaming herself when Sophie should be blaming herself too. She shouldn't let Finley always take all the blame. So she was telling Sophie that she's going to leave and Sophie, here goes Sophie being confused. She was like, no, don't leave. I want you to stay. So that's how Finley is still living in the house with Sophie and Micah. I think Sophie just doesn't know how to express her feelings because of her dad. Her dad hasn't been in her life since her sister was born. And when Maribel told her, you're acting just like dad. Like, you're just like dad. That set Sophie off. She was mad because I'm guessing her dad never acted like he cared about anything. And she just didn't have a good example on how to communicate. And in season two, episode three, she was always yelling and saying something nice to Finley in a mean way. And Finley even told her, she was like, you're always saying something nice to me in a mean way. It's confusing. And yeah, Sophie is confused. <laughs> she doesn't know how to express her feelings. And let's not forget Danny flushing Sophie's great grandmother's ring down the toilet like that. That's a whole family heirloom and she's just flushing it down the toilet. Don't forget that. And then episode four is when Sophie asked Finley to go to dinner, but she bailed on her to go have sex with Sophie. Micah asked Sophie to go check on Danny and Sophie drove 70 miles to go find her. They was, you know, I guess they needed some kind of closure. I don't know if you want to call that closure or not, but this just needed to be the end. And even after the whole day of being together and Danny telling Sophie her problems with her dad and all of that, when Sophie was about to leave, Danny was like, you can stay tonight. And I'm like, this is just, why is she going to stay tonight for? Y'all know y'all don't belong together because she just got finished saying that we both dodged a bullet. They know that they don't belong together. Sophie even told Finley, you saved me. So I think this little, I think this little hookup needed to happen. There's still a lot of emotions involved. They still love each other, Sophie and Danny do, but they don't belong together. Sophie and Finley, in my opinion, are a better couple, and maybe even Danny and Gigi, I don't know. So in episode five, Sophie comes to the realization that Finley may be the one for her. She wants to make up for what she did for ditching her, for ditching her to go hang out with Danny. She got some food ready, was about to, thought she was about to go eat it with her, but Finley was hooking up with some girl some random girl because Tess told her to move on which okay move on if Sophie can't get it together and realize what she got in front of her eyes move on you know and that's what Finley did Sophie walked in on them hooking up she saw them through the door and her face was priceless and I'm like is it too little too late for Finley and Sophie relationship I don't think so Finley is just so forgiving so I think they're gonna have some obstacles I think they're gonna have some obstacles, but in the end, I think they'll end up being together and making it right. I just wanted to make this video so people can be reminded that Danny played a part in this too. She was never giving Sophie any attention. She was always focused on Bet in that campaign. Once Bet lost the campaign, she was like, okay, I'm ready for you now. Let's get married. Forgetting everything that she did before. Shutting Sophie out, talking about, I need some space. I'm going on a run. I don't want to talk. I told you. I don't have nothing to say. Every time Sophie would try to talk to her and understand and get Sandy to open up, she was just shut down. So if you're trying to talk to one and over and over again, they're shutting you out and they're not giving you any kind of attention. They're not hearing you out. You're going to naturally go to the person who is hearing you out and talking back to you. Because Sophie even told Finley, at least you talk back to me. Daddy don't talk to me. Finley, I think is the most innocent. She was just trying to be Sophie's friend. Sophie was putting the moves on Finley. And then Finley started, you know, to get attached. Naturally, I mean, anybody would. So hopefully this video opened some people's eyes and had them remember that Danny played her part in it too. It just wasn't Sophie. Yeah, Sophie cheated. It wasn't right. But 
even if Sophie tried to talk to Danny and tell Danny anything, Danny would be like, I want to hear it. I'm going to sleep. So I hope we can see both ways on this. If not, we can agree to disagree. It's okay. But if you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you in my next one.